Oh hey, it's Wes, and I want to talk to you about the new A7 Mark IV. Lots of upgrades, lots of big news, you've probably seen and heard a lot of stuff already, but I want to focus on the things that you might have missed, so let's jump right into it. Number one, video bit rates, and what you can do with them. So we've got more megapixels, the problem with that is more megapixels means more computational power and more heat needed to get those pixels down into a video resolution. So you can do full frame 7K sized down to 4K, but only at 30p. If you want 4K 60p or even 1080 120p, you're gonna be operating in Super 35 crop mode. This is disappointing to a lot of people, but it might also be perfectly fine for you. That's up to you. Number two, the card slots. Oh, Sony has done it again. It's not as bad as it was last time. Previously, you had one slot that was UHS-1 and one slot is UHS-2. This time, your primary slot is just like the slots in the A7S 3 and the A1, where you have a UHS-2, flip around, you have a compact flash A or CF Express A, but the second slot this time is not dual compatible. And so because of that, if you're using the highest video bit rates, you can only feed that into card slot one. Now, this might not be an issue for a lot of people because with V90 UHS-2 cards, you can still get most of that capability out, but not all of it, unfortunately. Keep that in mind. With the A7S 3 you're able to do full redundant to both cards with those super expensive CFA cards. Number three, it's got this great dial on the back. You can switch the exposure comp dial, which a lot of people don't use if they're shooting in full manual, to an ISO dial or, you know, whatever you want to do. So you unlock that dial and then you can do that. I typically use the back wheel for ISO, but that has some problems. If you press it too hard, especially if you're using gloves, you end up pressing buttons. So that can be an issue. But with your third dial, you can now do whatever you want. You can do shutter speed on the front, aperture on the back, and ISO on the corner. That's fantastic. Number four, a little bit of a disappointment here. The back LCD screen is still just one million dot. That is very low resolution. The old one was 921,000 dots. It's pretty much the same resolution. The A7S 3 has a 1.4 million dot screen, and the A7R 4 was recently quietly updated to 2 million dot screen. Now, I wouldn't be as upset about this because this is a budget, budget camera, but that screen is so bad. I don't like to show my clients their images on the back screen because it's almost embarrassing how bad the pictures look on them. And when you're in bright sunlight, it does not look great. So mostly, I just keep this back screen to myself. The EVF is improved. Obviously, it's not top of the line, but you can get 120 frames per second, which is super important these days. It is 3.6 million dots, which is more than the 2.3 million in the old one, but significantly less than the fancy 9.4 million dot in the A7S III. So that's good and bad. Number five, improved sync speed. Although the full frame sync speed is still only one 250th of a second. I say only, that's still higher than a lot of full frame cameras these days. But if you switch into crop mode, much like with the A1, you can increase your flash sync speed, which is fantastic. So in crop mode, you can get one 320th of a second. Now, this crop mode isn't as useful as the one in the A1 because you have less resolution, but this could still be useful to a lot of people. And I find it very interesting. Number six, the last thing you might have missed out is the focus breathing compensation. I am currently shooting on the 35 G Master, which is a fantastic lens, but not amazing for video because it has a tremendous amount of focus breathing. Look at my room changing size. This camera now will be able to compensate for that. It's gonna crop in and out seamlessly to adjust for that. This only works with first party Sony lenses, unfortunately, but it is still a really interesting feature to have. Now, it's not going to perfectly solve the focus breathing problem. Those with sharp eyes will still notice the focus breathing because it's not just about the field of view, it changes other things about the picture. But that's very interesting. So that was six things that I found while digging through the spec lists about the A7 IV that weren't immediately obvious. 
If you found anything interesting about it, let me know down in the comments below. And I'm hoping to get my hands on one of these. I'm not a first round reviewer like Tony Northrup was. He was a before first round reviewer, oops. But I'll get it as soon as I can and get an in-depth review out to you. So until next time, let's go take some photos.